Hello and welcome to ABA Made Easy. I'm Mauricio and today we'll be going over part 6 of this clutch RBT exam review series. E. Documentation and Reporting. So you know what the best part of making YouTube videos for behavior analysts is? That you guys really know how to reinforce my behavior with those awesome comments. I read every single one. And congratulations for everyone who's passed the RBT exam. Help me congratulate them down below in the comments. And for those studying for the exam, you're almost there. You're going to do it. And I love the community and how all of you are supporting each other and giving each other tips and everything. So that's awesome. But if you're finding these videos useful, uh, consider hitting like and consider subscribing. But without further ado, let's get into this video. E1. Effectively communicate with your supervisor in an ongoing manner. So, all the sessions that are run ultimately are under the responsibility of your supervisor. So, your supervisor can be a BCBA, which is a Board Certified Behavior Analyst, or a BCABA, which is a Board Certified Assistant Behavior Analyst. Since they are responsible, if something goes wrong, they are liable. That's why it's so important to maintain communication with your supervisor. So how often should you be communicating with your supervisor? Well, you should be meeting at least two times a month. And per BACB guidelines, 5% of the hours of ABA therapy that you provide have to be supervised by a supervisor. This is to make sure that the sessions are running correctly. And this is just the minimum requirement, but if anything important happens between the supervision sessions, you must communicate that to the supervisor. This can include any type of change in the learner's behavior. That includes progress, or if they're backtracking on some of the behavior, or if a new problem behavior arises. It also includes any concerns that are noted, and if any incidences happen like we spoke about last video. Another important thing to report is if there's any environmental change, like medication changes, new changes in the family routine, or any other stressors that can come up and interfere with therapy. So here's a few tips when talking to your supervisor. You should always keep it about the client that you're working with, all right? And you want to respect the client at all times. You also want to keep the talk professional. Another good tip if you want to shine as an RBT is suggesting ideas based on ABA evidence-based principles that can help the therapy along. But ultimately, it's up to the supervisor's discretion on which ideas are taken in and which ones they suggest. And since they are liable for the therapy, whatever they choose as the behavior plan is what you're supposed to follow. If you have a really good supervisor, They'll provide feedback on what you're doing right and things that you can improve. And if a supervisor is taking the time out to give you feedback, it's because they care about your skills as a registered behavior technician and the client's progress. So don't take it personal. We could all improve. So take these tips. Be thankful that you have a supervisor that actually cares and just improve with their tips. It's awesome to be able to learn from someone who's been doing it a little bit longer than you and it makes you a better therapist in the long run. E2, actively seek clinical direction from a supervisor in a timely manner. So if you're unsure how to run any part of the session because the behavior plan is not clear enough, just contact your supervisor and get some clarification. You don't wanna be running the sessions incorrectly. Also, this section wants you to know that if you have any confusion with some ABA terms, to contact your supervisor. They know all the ABA terms, or they should, and they'll explain it to you in a better way uh, so you can understand as well. And that's pretty much it for this section, quick section. All right, let's keep going. E3, report other variables that might affect the client in a timely manner. So for those of you that don't know, I'm currently a child neurology resident, and this section is really important to me. So a lot of ABA therapy is geared towards children with autism. And the thing with autism is that it can present with other illnesses like epilepsy, uh, gastrointestinal issues, sleep disorders, anxiety disorders, you name it. So sometimes when they have these other situations going on, they need medication to help them out. 
and medication can vastly improve someone's quality of life. But with everything good, sometimes there's some things that are not so good. So with some of this medication, although it helps in one aspect, it can cause some adverse effects as well. And sometimes that affects behavior. Since it affects behavior sometimes, and we are behavior analysts, it's important to mention when there's a change in the environment, like medication changes or a new medication being added. That should definitely be noted. So when these things happen, make sure to log it into the case log and notify your supervisor. But medication isn't the only variable that can change something. Sometimes kids uh, have two parents that live in different locations and they switch off with which parent they're going to be on certain days. And sometimes, since we are in the homes, you have to go to different locations at different times. If the location or the normal schedule changes, you have to let your supervisor know because let's say they were planning on supervising that day and they're not in the original house that they were expecting they have to know that so they can make accommodations and go to the other house or schedule it for another day some other things that you want to notify your supervisor quickly are if the child is sick if there's a death in the family or if there's anything else going on at the house that can affect the therapy E4 Generate objective session notes for service verification by describing what occurred during the sessions in accordance with applicable legal, regulatory, and workplace requirements. Dude, these titles are too long. So documentation of what you do is important. Legally, if you don't document it, it was never done and you can't bill for it. But more importantly, if you're not documenting, then you can't tell what the progress of the child is like and you know that ABA therapy is very data driven so if there's no data then you can't go back and see which protocols are effective and which ones are not. One of the note formats that you have to get used to writing are called SOAP notes. No, these aren't your opinions on how Dove's lavender beauty bar soap smells, although it smells pretty good. Am I right? SOAP stands for Subjective, Objective, Assessment, and Plan. Subjective is what they tell you. So it's what the caretaker reports or what the client themselves reports. This is also the section to mention if there's any changes in the home or the setting that can affect the therapy. So an example of this could be like, the parent reports that the child seems more sleepy lately since starting his new epilepsy medication and the child was very eager to start therapy, ran to the door and showed me his new toy. O is objective. So objective is what is observable. Objective, observable, and measurable, okay? This is probably the one that they're gonna ask you on a test. They're probably gonna ask you, which of these is an example of an objective measure? And you have to choose which one it is. So an example could be, the learner correctly labeled 80% of the flashcards during tact training and there was 32 instances of biting in the four hour session. A is assessment. So assessment is how you feel the therapy is going compared to the last session and if it's working or not, according to what you've seen. And this is also where you place what has changed since the last session. So an example would be like, we ran a four hour session composed of echoic and man training, as well as behavior reduction for tantrums. Compared to last session, the echoic and man have improved and the tantrum frequency has decreased. The client got eight hours of sleep last night compared to the usual six hours of sleep that he usually gets. And that's assessment. Then you have plan. So for plan as an RBT, basically if things are going where they should be going, the plan is just continue targets as directed by my BCBA. If there's gonna be a change in plan, your supervisor will let you know. And so you would write that in this section. So let's do a soap note example for you, the viewer. And I'm just gonna type it down here, okay? So 
Learner seems eager to learn and voluntarily clicked on the video. Family members report that the learner is highly motivated to pass the exam and has been getting adequate sleep and eating healthy, balanced diet. O. Oh, objective. Learner made direct eye contact with the screen for 90 seconds of the video. They engaged in one instance of tapping the like button and wrote one comment in the comment section. What else did they do? There were two instances of yawning during the video and two instances of getting distracted with social media during the study session. Okay, A assessment. Hmm, so how do they do overall? During the 15 minute session, the learner has improved attention compared to the previous video where they engaged for 80%. Instances of yawning and social media distractions have decreased. Overall, the learner is making progress. So what's the plan? They're making progress, okay. Continue with current format of video for the next session. Great, all right, last section of E. E5, comply with applicable legal, regulatory, and workplace data collection, storage, transportation, and documentation requirements. So as a healthcare professional, confidentiality is really important. So confidentiality is protecting the privacy of your learner. There is something called the Health Information Privacy and Portability Act, or HIPAA, which is basically a law that requires you to keep confidentiality. And if you don't, there can be consequences. Since you are taking data, you have to know how to store that data in a secure fashion. So first thing you need to know is that all the data that you gather, you have to keep for minimum seven years. And some states require you to keep it for longer. But just know that if they ask how long you have to keep the data for, seven years. If you're taking data with paper, you have to be careful when transporting it from place to place. So if you're driving somewhere, it has to be in your trunk that can be locked and it has to be in a locked box inside the trunk. Okay, this could be a safe, this could be a locked box, but it has to be double locked pretty much in a box, in a locked trunk. And then if you're keeping it for the seven years, obviously you don't want all that in your trunk. So you have to keep that in a locked box like a cabinet or a safe. If you're taking your data digitally, like on an iPad, the iPad has to be password protected. And if you're sending information about the client at all, it has to be sent through an encrypted email that's HIPAA compliant. Now, sometimes things happen. Car break-ins happen, iPads get stolen. If you feel that the data was leaked and someone got a hold of the data, you have to let your supervisor know ASAP. And that's what you have to know for the exam. All right, he's done. You're doing awesome. Keep it going. One more section to go. We got F left. But hey, you're almost there. I mean, you got all the ABA principles out of the way. Now we're just talking about documentation. Next stuff is like how to be professional. So at this point, you should be almost there. You should be almost ready to take that exam. Excited yet? Be excited. It's gonna be awesome. You're gonna be an RBT. I'm so excited for you. We have an awesome community here and you're gonna do great things. But if you found this video useful at all, hit like below, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.